Amen. The song is telling us forever running, amen, and losing the race. Whatever you do in your life, you will lose if it's not for the grace of God. Whatever endeavor you may have, you will surely lose if it's not for the grace of God. And glory, hallelujah, sa biyaya po ng Panginoon na binigay niya sa atin. Now let's go to our lesson po mga kapatid. And we have been talking on the, this word grace, amen, for how many weeks already. And we have defined already according to the Bible what this grace all about. We arrived into a conclusion that this grace means a pure and recompense and merited, unrestrained and adulterated, undefiled, limitless kindness and favor of God. So from this exact meaning, amen, there can be no departure. There should be no departure. Why? Because it is so pure. Grace is so pure. Otherwise, grace ceases to be grace. The Bible says, amen, if it's grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Mga kabatid. So to arrive at the scope, and to arrive at the force of the Bible doctrine of this salvation by grace through faith alone. In order for us to arrive on that exact meaning, we need to follow. Amen. We need to follow consistently the path indicated by the exact meaning of the word. And who indicates the meaning of the, uh, the exact meaning of this word? It's the word of God. So we need to follow consistently. Departure from it would ruin grace, would destroy grace. Just a little, ano po mga kapatid, yung halo lang dyan, would destroy the grace of God. So we learn that the outpouring of God's grace, exceeding grace, is when Jesus Christ completed that redemptive work at the cross of Calvary. And that includes his finished work, his death, burial, and resurrection. That is the time where where the grace of God have appeared to all men. And that culminates also, mga kapatid, that is, I mean, the beginning also of, okay, the beginning also, the commencement, mga kapatid, of the dispensation of the grace of God. Amen. So we talked about that last time lengthily. And also we started the seven fundamental facts. We started on the seven fundamental facts about the grace of God, okay, about God's grace. So I shared to you last time yung aking pong slides, pero yung points lang para maintindihan po natin, we learned po mga kapatid last time, mga kapatid, that grace, okay, let me let me share my screen, we learn, sige po, uh, i-share po natin para ma, masun, masubaybayan po natin, masundan po natin kung ano yung Na, na discuss natin so far, okay? And uh, dito, dito po mga kabatid is uh, magikita po natin that uh, with regards to the grace of God, okay? Um, that uh, we learn from these uh, seven fundamental facts of grace, number one, that grace is not withheld because of unworthiness. We explain in that part mga kabatid na na Ang reality, ang, ang biyaya ay nagkaroon tayo ng biyaya dahil hindi tayo unworthy. It is not withheld. Para bang ganito ba na ay hindi kita bibigyan ng biyaya dahil, dahil hindi ka mabait. Hindi yun grace, mga kapatid. But rather, uh, God still doing good to you kahit hindi tayo mabait. He is doing favor sa atin kahit hindi tayo karapat-dapat. At yung favor na yon na ginagawa niya sa atin, kahit hindi tayo karapat dapat, ay ang biyaya. So ang grace ay, on, ay totoo. Ang biyaya ay maging totoo lamang kung meron pong undeservedness or meron pong unworthiness. If the object of that care and of that love is undeserving, then that is grace. So in, in other words, Grace is not withheld because of unworthiness, but rather, grace is given because there is unworthiness. Do you understand? Grace is given because there is unworthiness. And we are unworthy po, mga kapatid. And that, that, I hope we, we understand that clearly po, mga kapatid. It's not withheld 
because mga kabatid of this no so nakikita po natin also mga kabatid that itong biyaya po na ito mga kabatid na nakikita po natin na uh, grace is to be grace okay if is compelled if god is compelled to withdraw it in the presence of human failure and sin yun po maging problema it ceases to be grace in fact grace cannot be exercised where there is a slightest just a slightest human merit or human worth mga kabatid great can, a grace can be exercised if there's a slightest ano po ng ganun po human merit or worth no so with this mga kapatid i uh, we also learn not only grace is not withheld because of unworthiness number two facts that we learn that grace cannot be lessened because of unworthiness hindi po hindi po yun biyaya dahil pag sabihin ko because you are because you are so sinful kaunti lang kaunti lang na grace ang ibibigay ko dahil ikaw o mas mabait sa kanya kaya mas maraming biyaya ang ibibigay ko sa kanya so that's not the principle po mga kapatid hindi po ganyan ang prinsipyo ng biyaya god cannot propose to do less in grace for the one who is sinful and the one who had been less sinful grace is never exercised by him making up what may be lacking in the life and character po mga kapatid of by sinner so that's not the way po mga kapatid na exercise po ang biyaya po ng Panginoon so hindi po sa ganong pamamaraan okay so dapat maintindihan po natin that this, this grace could not be increased because fixed po ito for it is the expression of his infinite love and it could not also be diminished we learned about that last time it is the expression of his infinite love amen for it could not be diminished for every limitation po mga kapatid so there is there remains no demerit or no degrees of demerit to be considered or recognized mga kapatid because god already proposes and imposes on the action of the righteous god by the merit of the finished work of christ and that is set forth to be the propitiation and those merit and demerit thing mga kapatid as the issue of god's favor had been forever dismissed had been forever banished because there is only one merit and there is only one recognition amen when it comes to favor and that is what christ had done para sa ating kaluluwa po mga kapatid at the cross of calvary therefore this grace is exercised in perfect independence of our human sin po mga kapatid or any degree of human sin and thirdly we learn kasi hindi ko na diniskus in full details mga kapatid dahil natutunan na po natin yan at number three, we learn that grace cannot obligate a debt okay grace cannot obligate a debt hindi po pwede po mga kapatid na ang biyaya ng Panginoon na ito ay magobliga okay magobliga ng ano po mga kapatid ng isang isang uh, uh, ano tawag nito requirement or responsibility so hindi po biyaya if there is even the smallest or the slightest obligation na ipapakita that's not grace po mga kapatid but real real grace that action is no sense gracious that action is not gracious if there is any condition of a debt pag may obliga amen kahit example bibigyan ka ng 1 million kahit 1 peso or piso pa ang ibigay mo lang in exchange of 1 million that cannot be an act of pure grace sa Panginoon kasi po nag nagrequire ka nagobligate ka ng isang requirement but uh, i mean a requirement of work i'm talking or a debt or a, a, a form of payment a form of payment because by why it cannot be grace that it cannot obligate a debt because grace okay being unrecompensed favor grace is purely unrecompensed favor po mga kapatid 
kung magikita po natin, no? Purely unrecompensed favor. Dapat natin maintindihan that is an it is necessary. This grace is necessary. Na it should be unrecompensed to any obligation. Okay, for grace to be grace, it should be okay. It should be unrecompensed. It should be unrecompensed to any obligation, whether obligations which are past, obligation which are present, po mga kabatid, and obligation as to the obligation which are future. There should be no. There should be no obligation na ihingin po mga kabatid kapalit po ng biyaya. Whether past, present, future, grace is purely and recompense favor. Amen. And grace must always remain this unadulterated in its generosity. It remains unadulterated in its benefit. It remains unadulterated or unrecompense. Amen. In its generosity and benefit, and what he does, he bestow as a gift. Amen. The salvation is a gift. It is not a form of a reward or a or a debt, mga kabatid. Amen. It is a benefit, mga kabatid, that is called a gift, and that gift has been paid, amen, by someone else, and that gift has been fully paid, and the giver is not requiring requiring any more any payment of that gift. Because he fully paid it all, and by love and by kindness, he bestowed it to you and me, and that is grace, and that is a fundamental truth about grace. Amen. It is important that it must be kept free from all confusing. Amen. Complications po mga kapatid. When a recompense, kung meron pong bayad sa isang gift pang kapatid. When there is a proposal of payment to a gift, therefore every element of that grace had been obscured. It ceases to be obscure. It ceases to be grace, mga kapatid. And any true motive for a Christian, mga kapatid, is even sacrifice as well. The Scripture in everywhere, in everywhere, any Bible, mga kapatid. That these two truths, mga kapatid, would become a perversion. Kung kung there is a proposal, therefore the Bible presented grace, and the Bible presented salvation as grace, and it is presented as a gift. It is presented po mga kapatid as a gift. At dapat po nating malaman po niyan. It is presented as a gift. That means it is purely and recompense favor. A pure benefit from God. Let's look at what the Bible says from these verses. The Bible says, "Let me read to you. Let me read to you Romans chapter number three. Romans chapter number three. The Bible says in Romans chapter number three, verse twenty-four, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Do you see that?" Being justified freely by His grace, salvation is free because salvation is a gift, and we are familiar with our favorite verse: "For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is the gift of God." So our salvation is the gift of God, and you know Romans six twenty three: "For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life." Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's the gift of eternal life, and this gift can be obtained through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Romans chapter number five, verse number fifteen, the Bible says in Romans five, verse number fifteen. Let me read this to you. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Amen. Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many. At pinaulit ulit po ito sa Romans chapter number ano po mga kapatid. Look at verse number seventeen. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift 
of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of, of one, judgment came upon all to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of, by the righteous of, of one, righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. You see that? Free gift. Amen. Unto justification of life, po mga kapatid. So, therefore, any attempt, hello, any attempt to compensate God for this gift is an act so utterly out of harmony, po mga kapatid, with the revealed truth. Any attempt, okay, to compensate or to pay would be to prostrate the giver it would be to prostrate the grace. It is to distress the giver, mga kapatid. Any attempts to repay, mga kapatid. Amen. No matter how sincere that payment is, it will only serve to prostrate the grace of God. Listen very carefully. It only serves to prostrate the grace of God. Apostle Paul said, Amen. I do not prostrate the grace of God. If salvation come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Po mga kapatid. So let's not frustrate. Let's not try to, to pay the gift with our prayers. Let's not compensate that grace with our repentance. With our, hello, I mean repentance from sins. Let's not try to compensate that grace with I mean, I'm talking about salvation. I'm not talking about Christian life. Let's not try to compensate that grace with our good works because you insult the giver. You prostrate that grace of God regardless how sincere your motive is. But you prostrate that, that giver po mga kapatid because you think that God is trying to propose something in exchange of something. We lower that marvelous kindness of God. We underestimate the marvelous kindness of God. We lower it to a very base level of barter and trade. God, when He proposes grace to you, He is not trying to, to give you something in exchange of something. No, mga kapatid. Before you have done any good at all. He already died on the cross of Calvary. Before you even think of God. Before you even remember God. He already provided that salvation for you and me, mga kabatid. Amen. You see, that grace was not dependent, mga kabatid, whether you do works, good works or not. But rather, because you are declared guilty and you are declared that you could not do anything about your sin, Amen. To be forgiven and to be removed. Amen. That's why God proposes grace. And there is no other way around. There's no other way for you to be saved. Only God, in, until the Lord will intervene, until the Lord will say, okay, amen. I give you this. And I did this with kindness, by my kindness and by my love, mga kapatid. Yes, we should be faithfully serving Him. That's right. We should be serving Him faithfully. We should be loving Him. Amen. We should be giving ourselves to Him. Amen. The Bible says that ye present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Yes, should we serve Him. Amen. And serve Him faithfully. And gave ourselves. Amen. But listen. But never try to repay him. Never try to repay what he has done for you. Because you lower the expense. How dare us we can repay. Amen. Something we could not. Amen. Our services. Our faithfulness. The giving of our lives and our body to Him is just a reasonable service and praise the Lord. But it was not a payment of what He had done for us. This Christian service, mga kapatid, 
This giving of our lives is an expression of how thankful we are and how we love that God. And that is the expression of our gratefulness and our devotion to Him, but never to repay what He has done for us. Because God expressed His love to those whom He saved. Amen. And by that gracious thing He has done, mga kabatid, and what we are doing to God right now is out of love. Amen. Out of appreciation of what he has done, but never a payment because we could never pay. If if the basis, mga kapatid, of salvation is by payment and by debt, mga kapatid, nako, even if you spend the whole eternity, you could never, amen, satisfy and fulfill the, that payment. You see, don't attempt to pay it because you mock the giver. You despise the giver. You try to ano po mga kabatid. So yun ang problema sa relihiyon ngayon. Yung nagpipinitensya sila, they try to impress God, they try to ano as if God, amen, ay nakikinig sa kanila or na-impress. But what they're actually doing is they are insulting God, mga kabatid. That's why, We love that verse in Galatians chapter number 2, verse 20 po mga kapatid. Amen. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It was not a payment, mga kapatid. We live by the faith. Of the Son of God, and in other in other words, if Christian service is an expression of love and devotion and appreciation to what Christ had done for our soul, it was never meant to repay. Amen. But it was our love, it was our devotion to God, and our appreciation to God. Therefore, Christian service for God should be equally gracious. What we're doing is that is gracious. Ano po nga kapatid? It was not a payment, but it was a gracious act that we have done to God and for God. What What do I mean by a gracious act, mga kapatid? It's a gracious act because it is out of kindness and of love that we have for Him, but not a payment. It is not to compensate or a recompense to what He has done for us. Unknowingly po mga kabatid, the grace of God is too often denied. Palagi po itong na-denied po mga kabatid by any well-meaning attempt, any sincere attempt to compensate God for His benefits. It was rejected and denied, not giving importance by our quote-unquote well-meaning attempt and sincere services to Him mga kabatid. Because we think that our service to God is paying a paying to what He had done for us. Again, we are lowering the cost if we are doing that, mga kapatid. Amen. So, no actual likeness of worth. You could never. There is no actual likeness of worth. There is no such amount that anybody could achieve. Amen. When it comes to the grace of God, can be retained, amen. In salvation, there is no mga kabatid. In in all aspect of salvation, it is treated as the gift of God, and it's treated as the gift from God. So, an Christian service, on the other hand, and Christian faithfulness, is only as an expression of love in our Gratitude to God, because grace cannot obligate a debt. Amen. What is our point? Grace cannot obligate a debt. There is no payment required in the past. There is no payment required in present. There is no payment required in the future. God saves you. God saves sinners. In unrelated, unrecompensed 
unconditioned grace. Amen. Good work should follow. Amen. Service should follow after salvation, but with no thought of compensation because grace cannot obligate a debt. Sana po ay nakuha po natin mga kapatid. We are created unto good works and we should walk in them in Ephesians chapter number 2 verse 10 mga kapatid. In Titus chapter number 2 verse 14, we are a peculiar people should be zealous of good works and we are told to maintain good works in Titus 3:8. Thus and only thus our good works should be re- Related to the gracious salvation from God. And we are made, mga kapatid, to do that. But He first saved us before we could do that. But those services, mga kapatid, is not a payback. It is not a recompense po, mga kapatid. But it is our love. It is our devotion. Amen. It is our faithfulness to the one that saved us. Grace is out of question. When recompense is in question. Wala na. Pag mag-usap tayo, ng, pag mag-usap tayo po mga kapatid ng, ng, ng recompense, then out of the picture ng grace, it ceases to be grace. Why? Because real grace cannot obligate a debt. Okay? Grace cannot obligate a debt po mga kapatid. And dapat maintindihan natin ng maayos po yun mga kapatid. Dapat makita po natin yan at maintindihan po natin ng maayos. Okay? Another thing that I would like to you to look at po mga kapatid is this. Okay? The next one po mga kapatid that we would like to see, I, I shared my screen, is that grace, listen, grace is not exercised in the just payment of a debt. Number four mga kapatid, that grace is not exercised in the just payment of a debt. Now, what do I mean that it is not the just payment of a debt? And let me explain further po with that thought po mga kapatid para po maintindihan po natin what do I mean by that. So, we learned already that the fact that and that is self-evident mga kapatid that The payment of an honest debt could never be an act of grace. Any form of payment could never be an act of grace. In no circumstance, however, is the recognition of this truth more important than when grace is declared to be the present divine plan for salvation of sinners, mga kapatid. Now listen, if God should discover, if God should require, If God should should find any ano po any payment form of payment even the least degree if he will find to us mga kapatid if he will discover to us just a least degree of merit in the sinner mga kapatid hello then that is now an act of recognition of human merit and any disposal anything na binibigay it's because of that favor now mga kapatid by such recognition of human merit then he would be discharging an obligation mga kapatid toward toward the sinner and the discharge of that obligation toward the sinner would be a form of a payment mga kapatid or recognition of a debt but that's not how that's not how ano po grace works mga kapatid The Bible says in Romans chapter number 4. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 4 verse 4. Now to him that worketh not is the reward. Uh, that, now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace but of debt. Do you see that? Any form of work, any form of obligation. Amen. Or recompense, mga kapatid, is not reckoned of grace. But what? It is of debt. May pagkakautang po, mga kapatid. Hello. Remember this. When God gave you His grace, it was free. Hindi po yun utang. 
Kaya, you are free from any obligation from that. He gave it in pure kindness and love on His part. Amen. Grace is not exercised in the payment of a debt. It is obviously true, mga kapatid. Dapat maintindihan po natin. Dapat maintindihan natin clearly po, mga kapatid, that all men, amen, all men are sinners. You are a sinner. I am a sinner. And we are a sinner by nature. Amen. Kahit anong gagawin mo, you have a tendency to sin. And you could not stop sinning. And I tell you this, you could not stop sinning. Because you are a sinner by nature. Not until the Lord will remove you from the presence of sin. And that is the body. And that is the rapture po mga kapatid. Then and then we will stop sinning. But as long as we have this nature, sinful nature, we cannot stop from sinning, mga kapatid. So, men are sinners, both by nature, and you are also a sinner by practice. We keep sinning. We are a sinner by practice. Amen. We are actively sinning. And we are sinner by nature. That means we have the tendency to sin. It is innate. It is natural for this flesh to sin. And because we have the tendency, that's why we practice sin. Therefore, we are a sinner by nature and by practice. Amen. But more than that, mga kapatid, more than that, we are not just a sinner by nature and by practice, but far more than that. Amen, mga kapatid. Amen. We are also a sinner by God's, amen, judicial sentence. We are also a sinner by God's judicial sentence. That is to say, In this dispensation, mga kapatid, God has pronounced an equal and absolute sentence of judgment against all, both Jew and Gentile. That means men are now equally, amen, those who have not believed are equally condemned regardless of how much you sin. Whether you sin much or you sin less, God already declared, God already passed on a sentence that there is none righteous, no, not one. God already declared and the scripture had concluded all under sin. And the scripture had concluded we are all children of disobedience. The Bible says that All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that is a judicial judgment. It is not about now whether you sin much or you sin less. In the eyes of God, we are all equally sinners. And we are sinners by judicial judgment. Because God already pronounced that. There is no more difference between the Jew and the Gentile. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we need to realize. That when God is giving His grace to anybody, it was never a payment of a just debt because we have nothing, we are nothing, we are equally guilty, and there is nothing that we have done that will obligate God to give you something, but rather we are all undeserving and unworthy, and that grace is grace and nothing but grace. It was not a recompense, it was not a just payment, mga kapatid. Woo! I feel like preaching. And yes, I am preaching. And I hope, I hope you understand that, mga kapatid. To God, it is already in pronouncement. We are all fallen in Adam. We are all guilty in Adam. That is on the ground of Adam's disobedience. If you have read, amen, if you have read Romans chapter number 5, for by one man, amen, we become all sinful. For by one man, sin enter into the world, and death by sin, so death pass upon all men, for all have sinned. So what is my point, mga kabadid? Now, men are now judicially reckoned. In God's reckoning, men are now judicially reckoned that all are condemned. All are condemned. 
and removal from that position with God is to believe His Son. Amen. To be free from that condemnation is to believe His Son. And the Bible says in John 3.18, mga kapatid, He that believeth not is condemned already. Before we all believe, then we are all condemned, mga kapatid. That's why it was not a just payment to God and if just payment on the part of God when He disposed or when He gave us His grace. Because why? What do we have? We are already we're condemned. Amen. We have done not. And we are all part. We are declared. We are now judicially reckoned as children of disobedience. In Ephesians chapter number 2 verse 22. We are now declared dead. For in Adam all died. Amen. We are now judicially declared as dead in Adam. And fallen in Adam. And sinner with Adam. Mga kapatid. Men are now judicially reckoned. Look at Romans chapter number 11. Brother Peter, sino ba? I, I, I will be needing a help. Okay. Nang ating mga host po, mga kapatid. Nandyan ba si Brother Peter? Sir, umalis po. Okay, umalis si Brother Peter. So anyway, I, I'll read this, mga kapatid. Let's go to Romans 11. Romans 11, verse number 32. Romans 11, verse number 32. The Bible says in Romans 11, in verse number 32, this is the sentence of the Bible. Amen. For God hath concluded all, amen, all in unbelief. Do you see that? It is the conclusion of God. We are under and we are reckoned to be in unbelief. At anong sabi ng Bible, pag unbelief, nasa state tayo ng unbelief. Amen. Lahat ng tao, kung nasa state ng unbelief, he is condemned already. And again, you will only be delivered because God has provided us His Son. You only believe and not work it out, but by faith. He, he gave us His Son by grace, and you can have Him by faith. Mga kabatid. So we are reckoned in unbelief. What else? What's the reckoning? Look at Romans chapter number 3. Romans chapter number 3. What else? Anong sabi sa verse number, ano po mga kabatid? Verse number 9. The Bible says in verse 9, What then? Are we better than they? No. In no wise... For we have been proved that both Jews and Gentiles. Hello, there is no more recognition of the supremacy of the Jews. There is no more recognition of the, of the righteousness of the Jews which is from the law. But in our time and age, starting from the cross, mga kapatid, God already passed on a sentence. God already declared. God already pronounced an absolute sentence of judgment against all and God judicially reckoned everyone in unbelief. And what you see, whether Jew or Gentile, they are now equally guilty, whether Jew or Gentile. And the Bible says they are all under sin. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all, all, under sin. That is the recognition ng Panginoon po mga kabatid. What else mga kabatid? Anong sabi? Sa chapter 3 verse 23. Uh, chapter 3 22 muna. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. There is no difference of what? Between the Jew and the Gentiles. Why po mga kapatid? Verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So ibig sabihin mga kapatid, the, what, in God's reckoning, it doesn't matter now how much I sin or whether I sin more than you 
or you sin less than me or than anybody. That's not in God's reckoning. In the eyes of God, whether you have one sin and you have the other one, you have a thousands of sin. In his eyes, you are under sin and you are equally guilty and you are in unbelief. And that is the reckoning of God. He is, there is no more recognition of merits because you sin less. There is no more recognition of the de demerit because, amen, you sin much. No, that is not anymore the dealing of the Lord. We are not anymore under the law system. Amen. In the law system, mga kapatid, sa Old Testament, there is this, there is this, ano po mga kapatid, merit system. You keep the law, then that would be a merit for you. If you don't keep the law, that would be a demerit for you. We're not anymore. We are now under grace. And under grace, mga kapatid, knows no merit. It knows no, ano po, no favor and from anybody else na special tong ganito o ganyan. But, hello, as sin, as universal leveler. Do you see that? For there is no difference. Amen. There is no difference. Amen. Whether you are anak ka ng pastor at hindi ka nakapunta sa mundo, lumaki ka sa Christian home, pag hindi ka saved, there is no difference sa mga taong nasa kulungan, sa mga taong na declared ng guilty of murder or no rape or whatever. In the eyes of God, you are both guilty. In the eyes of God, you both need salvation. Because sin is universal leveler. Can I say this? Sin is a universal leveler of all men. Universal leveler of men. Regardless of your status in life, if you sin, there is no difference. On the other hand, grace is also a universal leveler of men. When I say leveler, you're equally the same ground. Amen. Grace is not proposing His give more grace to the righteous or less grace to the less righteous. No, that's not. When God proposes grace, that is the same amount for all because there is no more recognition of any merit. Hello? Why? Because we are all declared under sin. We are all equally pantay-pantay. Therefore, we equally need grace mga kapatid so anong sabi pa galatians chapter number 3 this is the divine reckoning this is the judicial reckoning of god look at romans chapter number i know not romans john uh, galatians chapter number 3 galatians chapter number 3 mga kapatid very you know why i have to discuss this you think the grace of god is just a simple subject no way. Mga kapatid, many a times that this grace had been prostrated because many people doesn't truly understand what the grace of God is. And that's why let's learn it and appreciate it. Amen. Galatians chapter number 3. Now I would like you to look at Galatians 3 mga kapatid, verse number 22. Anong sabi ng Bible? But the scripture had concluded the scripture had concluded. Who concluded? Who passed on the sentence? Who passed on the pronouncement? Who passed on the declaration? The scripture. The word of God. And look at the scripture. Had concluded. All. Amen. All. I mean all. And all what? All. Under sin. Romans 3, we're told, whether Jew or Gentile, they're under sin. Amen. Romans 3, we're told, there is no difference. For there is no difference. Why? For all have sin. And clear, na clear po yun mga kapatid. Now, the Bible says, the scripture had concluded all under sin. Amen. All under sin. So God has to, listen, God has to declare everyone guilty so that He could have mercy upon all. 
so that he could have grace upon all. Amen. You know, if you think you are not guilty, if you think you are not under sin, therefore, you don't deserve grace. You don't deserve grace. If you think you are self-righteous, you don't deserve God's mercy. Amen. You don't deserve God's love. Then Christ did not came for you because the Bible says he died for the ungodly. If you think you are godly, if you think you are religious, and if you think you are righteous, then you don't deserve God's grace. You don't deserve God's mercy. You don't deserve God's love and God's kindness and God's unmerited favor. Why? Because you think you're righteous. But if you understand and acknowledge and realize that you are in unbelief, that you are under sin, and that you are guilty, therefore, amen, we need grace. We need His righteousness. We need His holiness. That's what we see there, mga kapatid. Look at Romans chapter number 3. We're, we're opening scriptures. And these are the divine reckoning, mga kapatid. These are the divine reckoning. These are the divine pronouncement. This is the divine sentence. That everyone is in unbelief, declared in unbelief. Everyone is declared under sin. And that everyone is a sinner. And look at Romans 3, verse number 19. The Bible says in Romans 3, and in verse number 19 po mga kapatid, it says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped. And take note, and all the world may become guilty before God. All the world are guilty before God. So how could you escape that? Amen. My point, therefore, all human merit had been disposed of absolutely and forever. You could not say you are more righteous than anybody now. Because that's what they said, the sentence of God. There is no more reckoning or recognition of how much you sin or how less you sin, how much you work or how less you work, or whether you are less guilty or you are more guilty. There is no more reckoning and acknowledgement in that area. It has been forever disposed. It has been forever, mga kabatid absolutely disposed. There is no longer the slightest possibility that because of a personal merit, because you sin less, that a divine obligation may now exist toward you that, that you could now, God could give you favor because you are not that evil or that wicked compared to the other. That has been forever, forever been banished in this time and age. You know why? Because he already passed on a sentence that all have seen. He is already passed on a sentence that God, that we are all guilty. He already passed on a sentence that we are under sin. He already passed on a sentence, a pronouncement that we are all in unbelief. Mga kapatid. Amen. We are all dead in Adam. That we are all now equally children of disobedience. Therefore, we are already all condemned. And what can you boast? What righteousness you try to boast about? What religious activity you attempt to boast? That God would show kindness and favor to you because you're a religious person. Mga Hello. You see, man is a sinner. By nature, man is a sinner. Listen, man is a sinner by practice. And thirdly, you are a sinner. I am a sinner. Man is a sinner by a judicial pronouncement and that judicial sentence. And what is that judicial sentence? I am sin. I have sin. I am under sin. 
I am guilty and I am in the state of unbelief. That is. Therefore, God, amen, God have, have taken away any form of hope, any form of thought, mga kapatid, na pwede mong isipin na maawa sa iyo ang Panginoon dahil nagsisimba ka, dahil gumagawa ka ng ganito, dahil hindi ka ganun na makasalanan. He already taken that away because that's not the way God is dealing that mga kapatid. The sole divine object in thus, we are universally and God judicially disposing. God judicially removed all human merit, mga kapatid. All human merit. At nabasa po natin yan kanina that sa Biblia that God had concluded them all in unbelief. Amen. That He might. That He might. Could we go again to Romans 11 again? I, I would like you to see that. Amen. I'd like you to see that. Romans chapter number 3 verse 11. Para maintindihan po natin po mga kapatid. Kung ano po itong biyaya na ito. Sometimes madami pong nag-underestimate po. But, but, those, but those who have written songs about this, they have, must have understand the grace of God. Amen. Romans 11 verse number... Look at that verse. Romans 11 verse number 32. And the Bible says in verse number 32, For God had concluded them all in unbelief. And the next part here, that He might have mercy upon all. He might have mercy upon all. So, you see, you only deserve mercy if you are guilty. Amen. God could not show mercy if you are not guilty. You don't need mercy if you're not guilty at all. Amen. Now go ahead. If you don't join yourself and acknowledge that you are not that guilty or you are not that sinful, amen. Therefore, you don't need the mercy of God at all. And go on ahead. Amen. But the Bible clearly states that He concluded them in all. All in unbelief, so that he can have mercy upon all. So you see, do, do, do you realize that the point, mga kabatid, is very simple. God has to declare us all to be guilty and unbelief and as a sinner and under sin. Why? Why it should be all? So that he could give his grace to all, so that we could have mercy. Upon, he could have mercy upon all. He could be gracious upon all. Mga kapatid. Another, another thing, Galatians chapter number 3. Let's revisit that, mga kapatid. Galatians chapter number 3. The Bible says again in Galatians 3 verse number 22. Ano sabi ng Bible sa so verse number 22? But the scripture had concluded all under sin. Why? Why we have to be put under sin? Why we have to be pronounced to be under sin? That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So that you could have the Lord Jesus Christ. Kasi kung hindi ka under sin, therefore you don't need Jesus Christ. And if you don't acknowledge that you are a sinner, therefore you don't have a need of Him. You know, you will only have the necessity of Christ and the necessity of what He has done for you when you look at yourself as guilty and have a need of salvation and have a need of a Savior. But if you don't think like that, you will not go to Christ. You know? But even if you don't have a need of Christ, even if you don't have a, that recognition that you have a need of Him, but the Bible says you are under sin and you are. Amen. Condemned already if you are not saved. That's the point. Whether you recognize it or not. Because it's already God's judicial 
judgment. It is already God's judicial sentence. It is already God's judicial pronouncement. That's already the decree of God. And you could not know it, do anything about it. So the point now is that God now saves sinners. God now saves the guilty. God now saves, amen, those who are under sin by grace alone. Apart from every human merit is the teaching of the scripture. That is it, mga kapatid. God could now save. He could now dispose His grace. We all now need His grace because we are now equally guilty. Therefore, we equally need the grace of God. And when, 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 when God has stripped us off of any form of boasting, he, there, if, when God removed or any form of merit that we can try to brag to Him, mga kapatid. Amen. Therefore, we need now His grace. God see to it, mga kapatid, that His grace will be pure. It would be a pure, unrecompensed kindness because you are already declared guilty. So all you need is grace because there is no righteousness that you could now brag and say, I am righteous because God said, because God says, there is none righteous, no, not one. So this grace now is what you need. Amen. That's why the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So, wala ka nang pwedeng ibuboast. Di, di, look, at, look at Romans chapter number 3. Look at Romans chapter number 3. When it comes to the issue of grace, you know, I, I like this verse. When it comes to the issue of grace, the Bible says, in Romans chapter number chapter number 3 the bible says in verse number 27 the bible says where is boasting then that's the question after he told us with this wonderful scripture about the grace of god and that brought justification where is boasting then that is a question saan na ngayon ang mga pagyayabang at kayabangan the Bible says, it is excluded. Where is your boastings? It is excluded. You know why it's not, you know why it is excluded? Because God already stripped you of any occasion to glory. God already removed that occasion and that opportunity to boast about yourself by giving a declaration and a pronouncement that you are not good, you are not better. You are not alone, is spiritual, but you are guilty and you are condemned already. And that includes me. And you, we, you are under sin. And therefore, mga kapatid, when it comes to the issue of salvation and grace, boasting is excluded because it was God who ex declared that pronouncement and excluded that thing, mga kapatid. Hello? In this passage na nabasa po natin, God made it clear that human, God's grace and human merit could not go together. There must be first removal of the human merit so that God's grace can take over. It could not be in the presence of both. They could not coexist. There must be disposal of human merit. There must be removal of it because they cannot coexist. Mga kapatid, a man is permitted to do nothing. You are not permitted to do anything until God has done all that His grace decides. You need to be saved by grace first. Then you are permitted to do that. But prior for your salvation, you are not permitted to do anything. Mga kapatid, because you might, you know, you might start to boast about that. Many times in our, in our witnessing, in our conferences, in our ano po, teachings and preachings, we encounter this. At sasabihin nila na, are you saved? Tanungin mo, yes. Paano ka na saved? Hello. At kailan ka na saved? Some of these people, I will say, I got saved when I, I prayed the sinner's prayer. 
when I accepted Jesus Christ, sabi niya, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, Lord and Savior, wala namang problema sa term. Although we are using the term loosely. But listen very carefully. When you ask them, how did you accept Christ? How did you accept Christ as your personal Savior? And he said, I accept Him by prayer. I, I invite Him to come into my heart. So, ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, you are trying to create a merit on your own. Hello? You destroy the principle of grace. Amen. The Bible says, it is by faith that it might be by grace. So the only right response to grace is faith. And you are not permitted to do anything until that what He designed it for, about grace, for the salvation for grace for you is done. Then after you got saved by grace, then perform all that good works, perform all that repentance, perform all that confessions that you, you are doing right now, perform that ano po, services. But it should not, amen, come first before God has been done or God has done all that He's designed for the grace of God. Yes, good works grow out of, good works should follow. And are made possible by that gracious work of Christ. But it should not come first before grace. Any work of righteousness should not become first. Because you will think of that as a merit. You will think of that as something that you could boast about God. When someone will ask you when you go up to heaven, what will you answer? And if that someone will ask you, why should I let you in in heaven? You could not say because I say I, I, I say the sinner's prayer. I prayed for God to save me. Hello. Before you prayed anything, He already died for you. It's just a matter of acknowledgement of what He has done for you. Salvation is not, is not asking God to do something for you. Can I tell you this again? Salvation is not asking God to do something for you. Salvation is not asking God to save you. For goodness sake. That's not it. It, has, it is not asking God to do a favor for you. Because whatever, how you matter, how you ask, you are not in a position to ask, amen, to do something for you. Why? Because you are guilty. I am guilty. I am not favorable. No matter what I ask about God, amen. Wala po mga kapatid. It's no point. Amen. So before you ask God to save you, 2,000 years ago, He died for you. And that's for your salvation. That's for my salvation. So ibig sabihin, salvation is not asking God to do something for you. But salvation is rather the recognition and a belief and a trust of what He has already done for you. You see the difference? Again, salvation is not asking God to save you. But rather, salvation is recognizing an acknowledgement and trusting of what he has already done for you. It's a, there's a big difference there. That's why that sinner's prayer entered there. That sinner's prayer is you are trying to get something from God apart from Jesus Christ. You are trying to inquire, Lord, save me. Is, is that statement wrong? No. When you say, Lord, have mercy on me. When you, when you acknowledge in your salvation, so, Lord, have mercy in me. Ang sagot ng Panginoon, I did. That's my son. I give it to you. That was my mercy. When you ask, when you ask God, Lord, save me. Then the answer of God says, I did. He died 2,000 years ago. That's for your salvation. You see? May mga tao will say, Bakit ka napatawad ng Panginoon sa iyong kasalanan? And they will say, 
Because I ask God forgiveness. What? Can you imagine if you are just asking forgiveness and you are forgiven? Therefore, no need for the Lord Jesus Christ to die if that's not the basis of God's forgiveness. But you know what the Bible says? In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. You are not forgiven because you ask God to forgive you. You are not saved because you ask God to save you. Because salvation is already a provision. It has been already provided for you. It's already a gift. Do you ask for a gift? Lord, bigyan mo ako ng gift. <laughs> That's absurd. Regaluhan mo nga ako, Lord. Amen. You are asking him a favor. And what favor do you have? What do you have? Look at what the Bible says. Nothing. There is none. So when God asks you some, I, when you ask God of something and God give it to you, what is that? It's a form of a barter trade. That's not it. Gift, it's already a gift. It has been offered to you. Oh, ito na, ito na. It's just a matter of recognition. It's just the matter of acceptance. Amen. Hiningi, binigay na nga sa'yo. Lord, bigyan mo nga ako. Binigay na nga sa'yo eh. Amen. I hope na-realize po natin mga kabatid. Therefore, mga kabatid, salvation is being always and only a work of God for man and is always and only by grace alone. It is the work of God for you. Amen. Not the work of man for God. Not the work of men for God. It's the work of God for you and me, mga kapatid. We're not, that's not, sal, salvation is not a reward because you ask, because you, you pleaded for it. And you know, it's not. And the act ceases to be gracious. That act of grace ceases to be gracious when it is when there is a recognition of a merit. It is not anymore gracious when there is a recognition of merit. For example, bakit ka pinatawad ng Panginoon? Dahil lumingi ako ng kapatawaran ng Panginoon. Do you ibig sabihin, you are now meritus because you ask God forgiveness? Why? Why are you saved? Because I, got, I asked God to save me. Mga kapatid, you need an understanding. Amen. It, therefore, it's not anymore an act of grace. Because God is now obligated to give you something. Amen. Any obligation is not an act of grace. You know, God saved you not because He's obligated to save you. You know, God is not obligated to do anything about us. Why? Because He is God and we are His creature. Do you realize that? God has no obligation whatsoever, not even to save you. He, God is just even if you go to hell. God is just even if He will not give the Lord Jesus Christ. The giving of the Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation was not because God was obligated to save you. The giving of the Lord Jesus Christ is because He loved you. He loved me. Amen. It was His pure kindness. Amen. So also, God saved you not because you required God to save you. You put that yoke. You know, when you ask Him to do something, you are giving Him an ob obligation to do that. And what is that? It's a form of a merit on your part. Amen. And it, it ceases to be. You know, God was merciful to me because I asked God for mercy. He showed mercy in my salvation because I pleaded for mercy. Do you think that it's a form of human righteousness? You, you, you put an obligation to God to do something for you. But that's not how grace, the grace of God in salvation functions. It is not a just payment of something you ask. 
It is not a just payment of something you requested. Kung ganung pamamaraan, therefore, salvation is by prayer. Again, grace is not a just payment. Whether a debt, whether a request, whether an obligation that the sinner is asking to God. But it's not a just payment. It was not an answer to your requests. Salvation is not an answer to your requests. Amen. The salvation, amen, for the soul of every man that was forever finished 2,000 years ago was already done and finished and complete before anything, anyone asked for it. Before you think of it, before you seek about it, before you realize you need to be saved, it was already provided. Amen. I'm not angry, I'm preaching. Amen. Whew. Again, salvation is a matter of recognition of what He has done for you. Salvation is a matter of belief and faith of what He has already done for you. Salvation is a matter of acceptance that it's already been given to you and gift. It's just acceptance on your part. It was not, salvation is not asking God to do something for you. Salvation is not asking God to save you. Mercy is not asking God to show you mercy. Amen. Salvation is not giving God an obligation or pleading to God so that He will do you a favor. You know why God can be gracious to you? Not because of you. It's because of what His Son has done for you. Because His Son satisfied Him. His Son satisfied His holy demand. His Son satisfied His righteous demand. His son is the propitiation for our sin. And his son was set forth to be a propitiation for our sin. His son was set forth to be the redemption, to be the forgiveness, to be our justification, to be our reconciliation. And he gave you forgiveness. He saved you by virtue and by the merit of his son. Not because of your own merit, because you pleaded for it. When you put your trust on his son, Amen. For the sake of His Son. For the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. He showed you mercy. He gave you redemption when you trust His Son. When you believe on the finished work of His Son. That is salvation. Mga kapatid. There's nothing more clear than that. Because salvation. Again, salvation is a finished Work. Hello. Salvation is a finished work. Salvation is a finished transaction. And sinners need to realize that. You need to realize that. Now, you could review. Ask yourself, paano ka na save? And be honest about it. Paano ka na save? Hello. Do you think you got saved because you asked God to save you? Do, you? do you think now you have a favor that God will do that for you? What do you have that God will listen to you? When the Bible says you are guilty, when the Bible says you are condemned, when the Bible says, hello, you are under sin, when the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. What do you have that God is obligated to listen to you? What do you have that God is obligated to give you this thing? And when God will do that, therefore, you are meritus in His sight. Oh, it's not anymore grace. It's a form of a just payment because you have a favor sa Kanya. You know, grace is not in operation with favor. Grace is in operation because of undeservedness, unworthiness, and guiltiness. Grace cannot be bestowed because you gain a favor to God. Because any favor is a form of a merit, mga kapatid. 
any putting of obligation. It's not the, the, the action or the function of grace. Grace stripped us. When God bestowed grace and His kindness to you, mga kapatid, there is not a slightest thing that you deserve it. And you are not obligating Him to give it to you. Amen. And there's no such favor that you have to God. But when you go to Christ, amen, when you go to the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the person, that Christ is favorable to God. He is favorable to God the Father because the Son of God forever satisfied the holy and just demand of His person. And He become the propitiation. When you go to Him, then God pardon you in behalf of Christ. God will save you in behalf of Christ. That's grace. Mga kapatid. Amen. What about that? Amen. What does the Bible say? Romans 3.24 Being justified freely. Do you understand when you are justified freely? You are not justified because you ask God a favor to justify you. We are justified freely. That means that is without cause. Amen. Without cause. Freely. He did it freely. By His own will. By God's own volition. He's done it for you. Out of His kindness. Not because you obligate Him to save you. Not because you obligate Him to show mercy to you. Amen. But... We are justified freely. By what? By His grace. Not a debt. Not an obligation. We are justified freely by His grace. Where did God get such favor of justifying you by grace? Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Why God can justify you now by His grace? Because Christ already provided the redemption. God already, Christ already provided that propitiation of the, through faith in His blood. God already provide, Christ already provided that justification through the death of the cross of Calvary. And through His resurrection, His death, burial, and resurrection. God can now freely save anybody. God can now freely bestow His grace to anybody. Amen. Without recognition to any form of merit on your part. Because Christ already forever satisfied him. Mga kapatid, kung hindi mo ito maintindihan, ay, you will always have trouble. Salvation. And I have spent much on this so that you will realize what truly grace is. And if you are listening intently, may you realize, mga kapatid, and try to search your salvation, examine yourself. Don't say that you are considered, alam ng iba na, na sinabi mo ng ligtas na salvation is a personal thing. Try to search in your heart, baka that sinner's prayer has still a hold on you. Try to search in your heart, baka that sinner's prayer and that confession and that what people required you to do has still an influence on your faith, mga kapatid. And you will not realize Pala, that you are guilty and you're not saved. Ah, kapatid. Try to understand if your salvation is truly by grace through faith. That's the only way. And you have that. You need to realize that, mga kapatid. You examine yourself. Hello? Examine yourself because this is what the Bible says na pinapakita po sa atin this morning. Okay? So, we have few time. I, I, I have 15 minutes, but in 10 minutes, I let us let us go to the next one po, mga kapatid. Hindi po, hindi po tayo nagmamadali po nito. And I'll try my best po, mga kapatid, na maging malinaw po ito. Kasi sobrang haba nito, mga kapatid. Napakahaba. Pero dahan-dahan lang tayo. Wala po akong Wala po tayong uh, deadline po nito. As long as the Lord will give us opportunity, we will talk about the grace of God. 
Grace is not withheld because of unworthiness. Grace cannot be lessened because of unworthiness. And grace cannot obligate a debt. And grace is not exercised in the just payment of a debt or a request or a, or a pleading. That's not how grace is exercised. And I hope na naging malinaw po yun mga kapatid. But fifth one po mga kapatid, ang panglima, grace is never dependent of how much of a debt. And grace is never dependent of how much of a debt. So hindi po yun nakasalalay. Amen. Kung gaano kalaki ang pagkautang mo. Hindi po siya na, na, na ano po mga kapatid. Hindi po yun na, naka, uh, nakabase kung gaano kalaki ang pagkautang po natin. That's not how grace operates mga kapatid. Hello, that's not how grace operates. Because mga kapatid, grace is no longer grace. If there is again a complicated, if it complicated even in the slightest degree of the payment of a just debt, it can never be that which is added to. Grace is not added to your righteousness. Amen. It is never a part of or a righteous transaction. Amen. It's not an additional Okay, because you're good, I'll give you grace. That's not it, mga kapatid. Because grace, mga kapatid, makikita natin in its exact meaning. If we are consistent with its exact meaning, it precludes, it removes, amen, any complications with other acts or issues, however righteous or just. Because grace is described as a gift, not a barter or trade. Amen. However equal, mga kapatid, it's not a barter or trade. It is pure kindness. It is pure, ano po mga kapatid, it is pure mercy and love, not fulfilling of an obligation. An act in order to be gracious must stand disassociated and it must stand alone, free from anything. Therefore, divine salvation by grace, mga kapatid, the kindness of God toward the sinner. Now listen, it is not less than it would be had they sin sinless. Grace is not, okay, kaunti lang ang grace na ibibigay ko sa'yo. Kasi kaunti lang kailangan mong grace kasi kaunti lang ang sin mo. It is not less than it would be had they sin less. It's not that way. Ikaw, maraming biyaya ibibigay ko sa'yo. Dahil, Sobra kang makasalanan. Hindi po siya pang ontak. Hindi siya pang patching. Hindi po siya pang patch up. It is not more than it would be had they sinned more. Dahil marami kang kasalanan, maraming grace ang kailangan mo. But rather, it is wholly unrelated to every question of human merit. Pinaulit-ulit po natin yan, mga kapatid. Grace is neither treating a person as he deserved, nor treating a person better than he deserves. That is not about deservedness or worthiness, mga kapatid. That is out of question, mga kapatid. When we talk about grace, it is treating a person graciously without slightest reference of his debt, without slightest reference of his merit. Grace is infinite love expressing itself in infinite goodness. And grace is never decreased. And grace is never increased. It is infinite, unlimited supply. Regardless kung gaano kalaki ang iyong kasalanan, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Whether kaunti lang ang iyong kasalanan, mga kabatid, you still need the same amount of grace. It could not be decreased or it could not be increased. And through the finished work of Christ, amen, by which he took away the sin of the world, and through that divine decree which constituted that God said we are all under sin, grace is free to save in every case. I'm telling you, brethren, 
Grace is free to say in every case. Kahit anong case mo sa buhay, kahit anong klase kang makasalanan, grace is free to save in every case. Whether anak ka ng pastor, whether, whether murderer ka, whether madami kang mga sinful acts na nagagawa, again, grace is free to save in every case, mga kapatid. Because grace is never dependent of how much of a debt. It's not dependent on the debtor. Grace is what? Fixed. Grace is constant. It is unlimited. It is infinite, mga kapatid. And only grace can save in any case. Only grace can save in any case. It offers a standardized and varying blessing to every sinner, to every individual alike. It, the, it is the blessing that is measureless. It is standardized to all. It is equal for all and varying, mga kapatid, blessing to every one that is declared guilty. There was a song, mga kapatid, I was so blessed with that song. I don't know if that's a contemporary or a hymn. But the, the part of that song that says, and I will always illustrate this song, and in that, the, the part of that song, it tells us that, I don't know what a sinner you are, but I know what a Savior He is. You see? It doesn't matter what kind of sinner you are, but I know what a Savior He is. It doesn't matter how much you sin. Amen. Grace doesn't know any bounds. Grace is limitless. Grace is infinite. Grace is measureless. It's not dependent of how much of a debt. There is always grace for every sinner. There is sufficient grace for every sinner. There is enough grace for every sinner. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the grace of God. That is the grace of God. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That kind of grace He bestowed upon us. I hope, mga kapatid, you will acknowledge that grace. I hope you will recognize that grace of God. And I hope we'll, we'll sing and praise God and appreciate that grace. Let's, we are now, that's number four, right? Uh, number five. We will talk about number six, number seven. Kung kaya natin next week. And by God's grace. Next, okay, next Thursday, we will talk the number five and number six, mga kapatid. And I hope na-enjoy nyo. I hope nakita po natin po, mga kapatid. Mas lalo nating na-appreciate ang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa buhay po natin. And glory to God for those who, who, who stayed with us. I know, ang schedule natin ngayon, hindi kagaya po ito ng dati. Kasi GCQ na tayo ngayon. Baka ang iba sa inyo ay nagtatrabaho na, may ginagawa na. So now, this is free para po sa lahat po mga kapatid. Kung libre ka, kung kahit nasa work ka, i-tune in mo lang yun, tuloy-tuloy. Kahit wala pang makikinig mga kapatid, I will still preach about this mga kapatid. And because, uh, but praise God, we have some people here in our meeting room and praise God, we have people here in our FB live. And so I hope mga kapatid, the lesson is helping you this morning and it, 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 uh, Orient us, mga kapatid, sana po sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Okay? So let's let's uh, listen again to this song, mga kapatid, that we we played earlier. And I, I love this song. The title of the song, mga kapatid, is Under Grace. Okay? The song is Under Grace by the Lenses, mga kapatid. Amen. Under grace. And we're done, mga kapatid. Glory to God. Amen. But listen gone, first, mga kapatid. My chief accuser lost the
just try to measure east to west. Yep, right there, measure. Or to Amen. the old Sean's Lord's lips. You'll find no record of my past. You'll find my Savior's righteousness under But God in mercy had a plan. Yes. Amen. Glory. His son's Woo. own blood. <laughs> my sins erased. Amen. Amen. My pardon now. Reason. And thank you, brethren. Let's close in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for that grace. Oh, Lord, there's nothing we can do but to believe it and to trust it and to praise you, Lord, because of it. Lord, we have seen ourselves so undeserving, but you are so gracious. And that gives your grace the opportunity to be exercised because of our undeservedness, of our unworthiness. And Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, because you have provided all these truths sa inyo pong salita. And help us every day to realize to know more about grace as we know more about you, as we know more about your words. And thank you for the people, Lord, who are following and learning with us. Bless them continually. Bless the next program, Lord, kay Pastor Bob and sa amin po dito. Sana ikaw po patuloy naming madakila at ma-appreciate sa inyong ginagawa. Bless ang mga programs namin for the whole day, even po doon po sa, sa AVP, up to sa AVPI online tonight. And Lord, pinabalik po namin ang pasasalamat sa inyo dahil ikaw po ang gumawa nito at inyong biyaya po ang, ang gumawa nito. And, uh, and, and this we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, good, good morning everyone. God bless us all and we are still, okay. We're on time. And praise God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Sister Jem or Brother Peter, pwede na pong i-ano po yung Facebook Live natin at i-end po ang atin pong. And thank you.